rolling hey welcome back everyone and today's topic is gonna be drag and drop again this is part two and a follow-up from a previous video i'm gonna link it down below the, if you don't know how to do drag and drop so far in action the basics are covered in the link down below to, so check it but today's agenda is basically a request from one of the viewers uh Sudarsan, and he's saying hey how could you take the previously defined uh, drag and drop items. Let me just demo it like so. Let's say if I drag something in our basket and how would I take it back without making this type of, as you can see, glitch or just dropping it randomly? How would I basically realign it in the existing list and make it more dynamic? If you don't know how to do the first and foremost, this type of drag in and drag out functionality, check the video below. Again, it's important because Otherwise, nothing here is going to make sense. But if you are here already and you created your drag and drop functionality, what we're going to do is add a button, which is basically maybe a remove or clear. And we're also we're going to assign the same action to this. So let's say if we are mouse overing this over that area, we're just going to place it and, and assign some sort of coordinates so it realigns the box. So let's go ahead and do so. We're going to just do those two things. So I'm going to speed up a little bit and just add to my canvas, um, let's say a clear button or an icon really simply. I'm looking for something more like a trash, I guess. And I'm using Noun Project by way app, which is pretty neat and quick, especially for prototypes. If you are in a rush, you don't want to craft your own icons. You can just do it quickly here. So I'm going to go ahead and just add the trash icon, maybe add a clear label to it so that there is some sort of connection between. I don't know if a metaphor is right, just looking at it, but I think it should represent it pretty well. And then I'm gonna group those two bits together into dynamic panel. So it's, it's kind of like a one element and that's it. We're done. No, I'm just joking. Basically what we're gonna do next is we have those coordinates pre-existing ones, right? So like 70, 160, 106 and so forth. And I noted them down before, but I have to re-note it. Boom, and once that's done, you, you can see that I have three card coordinates S and Y right here. And then I can just basically return it. So basically what I'm gonna do, every time I click on this, I'm gonna add an interaction on click and just say move and just move every single card, doesn't matter where we are right now, to their, to their previous destination. So two, and let's see, 70, I know it's 106, so it would just return the card back. I can also animate if I wish, but it's really up to you, so I can maybe do something like ease out or ease in. Let's say we are gonna do it in 200. This is, might not be actually, maybe for like half a second, and it's gonna slow down, like so and then just replicate that, choose another target, which is my card two. As you can see, I had dynamic panels. Again, if this is too quick and too advanced, check the other video, it's really essentially cover the basics first before proceeding with more advanced things. But that's how I would approach returning the cards to their previous destination, uh, to their previous setting, like so. And now if I go back, and I drag in that object, as you can see, we have this. And if I click on clear, it back, it, it puts it back. Pretty neat, right? So that's that case is kind of covered, but we are pushing it back in. Now, what's not covered is what happens, let's say, if I push my card here, but then I want to drag it out manually into a case, right? So this is a bit more complex. Um, and that's where, let's say, we basically would maybe detect that if I drag it out and this element is not over this uh, shelf, you know, basket in this case, then we can position it there and it's gonna be automatic. So it could be as simple as that. And how would I do that? I would just attach it to existing card and gonna look through and see something like on drag drop. I'm just gonna duplicate this. Um, and just change the else statement to if, so that both of them are true by default. And then case, we can just say um, 
return to the default, or you can say case two, it's up to you. Um, and so I'm gonna just edit that and say if area of widget, the card meaning this is not over basket, then we basically drop the card. And it's gonna initiate everything was down below, which is return C to C1, wait, return, yada, yada. But we don't need to wait. We can literally just delete those move elements and just paste in what is in a clear button, like so. Copy and go back to this if statement. Boom, that's simple as that. And now let me show you how it's gonna work. So the use case one, we return it, we clear it, easy as that. The use case two, we put it in a basket and then we drop it somewhere else, it returns it. Simple as that, and that's how you do it. It's, you know, it takes you like a few minutes to add a bit more logic and conditions to that. Um, the same way you can do with other cards as well, but you would me need to make interactive and then, you know, add more logic, exactly the same as you did with the first card. So if this doesn't make sense, again, go back to a previous video. If this makes sense, add more functionality, experiment, try to reach that limit where, you know, you are challenged enough to come up with your own ways to use Axure as a Power UX tool. And as usual, give a like, subscribe to this channel, leave a comment down below. I uh, really appreciate your feedback so far, guys. I got so many emails with, you know, tangible requests of your challenges as well as kind words. And it keeps me going and it keeps me inspired to give you something um, which is useful material, of course. And so I'll see you next time and stay tuned for more material.